Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming. My name is Dave Nickars. I'm the Green Party candidate for Wolseley in the upcoming provincial election, and I'm also the conservation and water stewardship critic for the Green Party of Manitoba. I'm here today with James Bedom, the leader of the Green Party, to talk about the Green Party of Manitoba's plan for carbon reduction in Manitoba. The Paris Climate Agreement calls for emissions reductions to keep global average temperature increase to less than 1.5 degrees Celsius. This obligates us to reduce emissions, and the NDP government has consistently failed to reduce emissions in Manitoba. In 2002, the Manitoba government set its greenhouse gas emissions reductions target to 18% below 1990 levels by 2010. In 2008, the government legislated a weakened target of 6% below 1990 levels by 2012. Both of these goals were never met. The Manitoba NDP had repeatedly failed to meet previous emissions targets. The latest plan introduced on December 3rd seems more like an admission of defeat rather than a commitment to emissions reductions. It promises 33% less than 2005 levels by 2030. This, barely, this is barely better than the goal the NDP set in 2002, shortly after they first came into power, but 28 years later. They simply keep setting the goalposts further and further into the future. I want to introduce James Bedome, the leader of the Green Party of Manitoba, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about why the NDP plan won't work. Thank you very much, Dave, and thank you everyone for coming today. So, you know, one of the problems that we have with this government is that, as Dave noted, they have consistently set targets and failed to meet them. Effectively, this government is misleading the public on climate change. Uh, probably recently, we've seen a number of ads come out where Manitoba claims that they are a leader on climate change. So this is from their own climate change report, and it shows that Manitoba is anything but a leader on climate change. We have the fourth highest rate of growth in emissions since 1990. While six of ten provinces have reduced their emissions since 1990 levels, Manitoba is not one of them. We have the fifth highest rate of per capita emissions, and other hydro provinces such as Quebec and BC have lower per capita emissions. So the NDP's definition of leading is mediocrity. There are a couple reasons why their plan's not going to work. It's relying heavily on cap and trade, and of course this government has talked for years about cap and trade, but yet we still lack the details of exactly how a cap and trade system is going to be implemented. Cap and trade is considerably more complex, bureaucratic, and doesn't leave for as good, clear, simple of a system to understand. Just to explain cap and trade, the idea is to set a maximum level for pollution uh, and large emitters are penalized for going over that amount and if they go over it, they have to purchase what's known as credits from other emissions users. Now, it, under the NDP's plan in Manitoba, only large emitters will be included and it's not yet clear exactly where that will apply, but if we look at Environment Canada data, we can see there's 13 emitters that produce over 50,000 kilotons of emissions per year, and that would be about 10% of Manitoba's emissions. So once again, cap and trade will apply to maybe 10% of our emissions in Manitoba. There's also an undefined concept of carbon stewardship, but there's practically no details on carbon stewardship and how it will be implemented, uh, really leaving us open and wondering what exactly are they going to do. The NDP plan is also promising to review fossil fuel subsidies, but once again, it's in non-committal language. They're going to review it. The real answer would be to simply end subsidizing fossil fuel companies. Why are we subsidizing some of the largest and some of the most profitable companies in the world rather than ensuring that that money is going to Manitobans and to the needs here in Manitoba? Uh, I think Dave has a few more points that he wanted to draw out about the plan, and following that, we're gonna present our alternative vision of how we would do better. So as many of you know, the Energies pipeline is an Alberta tar sands pipeline that's going to bring tar sands oil through Manitoba on its way to New Brunswick and to places abroad. It will facilitate a 32 megaton per year expansion of the tar sands. That's through one pipe through Manitoba, and it's much more than the entire annual emissions of Manitoba just through one pipe. The Manitoba government has the authority to withhold permits uh, for the pumping stations on this pipeline. And also, 
A huge amount of hydroelectric power, 150 megawatts, is proposed to be used for the pumping stations for this pipeline. This is taking the so-called clean hydropower and turning it into a tar sands facilitations, um, facilitation. And as far as we can tell from what the NDP has said, they are in full support of this pipeline. Another issue is hydraulic fracturing or fracking. In southwestern Manitoba, there is unregulated hydraulic fracturing going on, causing damage to the groundwater and flaring off hydrogen sulfide laden gas into the atmosphere. A serious climate change plan would ban fracking immediately. And earlier this summer, the government of Manitoba reintroduced peat bog mining after a four year moratorium. Um, the equivalent carbon dioxide release from peat bog mining is about 3% of Manitoba's emissions. We could get rid of 3% of Manitoba emissions tomorrow if we banned peat bog mining. Transportation accounts for 39% of the province's greenhouse gas emissions. The NDP plan does little to address the transportation sector. Now I'm gonna hand it off to James and we're gonna talk about what a real green plan looks like to reduce emissions in Manitoba. So the Greens realized that in order to have an effective climate plan, we need to have a climate plan that deals with a broad range of, deals across sectors and deals with a broad range of industries in Manitoba. But perhaps one of the easiest and perhaps the best way that we can start addressing climate change is implementing a carbon tax. And the Greens have outlined what a carbon tax could do. So basically the idea of a carbon tax, just to make it clear, is that you would put a tax on the burning of fossil fuels at a level that would be uh, that would take into account what's known as the carbon equivalent emissions coming off of these different fossil fuel sources. So primarily in Manitoba, we'd be looking at gasoline, diesel, and natural gas. So we'd be looking at about 11 cents more per liter for gasoline. We'd be looking at 13 cents more per liter for diesel and about nine and a half cents more per cubic meter for natural gas. Now, with this carbon tax, we could raise about 500 million in annual revenues. And what we would do is we would recycle about two thirds of that revenue right back to the people of Manitoba. About a third of it would go directly to people in the form of cash transfers. So every individual Manitoba resident would get $130 back as their carbon tax dividend. In addition to that, we'd reduce income taxes because we think that we shouldn't be taxing people for what we want them to do, going out, getting a job and working and earning income, but rather we should be taxing people for what we don't want them to do putting out emissions into the environment that threaten the planet and threaten human survival going forward. And perhaps really importantly as well to a carbon tax would be that another third of it we would use to fund green infrastructure investments. We would fund things that would help us to reduce emissions here in Manitoba. And with a carbon tax as we proposed it at $50 a ton, we could raise $167 million in investments per year to change the way that we live, because addressing climate change is gonna require broad societal reforms. And I just wanna contrast that. That's 167 million per year in comparison to the NDP plan, which is 1 million per year, 5 million over five years of new funding in their new plan. So the difference of what you can do is drastic and it's, it's a huge impact. I just thought I'd highlight some of the things that could be done. One of the things we've recently heard the province talk about is, oh, we've signed a memorandum of understanding with the city of Winnipeg about converting to electric buses. But yet we all know that's a great idea, let's convert to electric buses, but it's not gonna be done with a million dollars per year. 167 million per year, assuming it was entirely applied to that initiative, would have us converted to an entirely electric fleet within four years. Now I'm not saying we would necessarily do it that fast, it may make more sense to put it on a replacement value, but that move alone would result in about 48 kilotons roughly, give or take, per year in annual reductions. It's also worth noting that a carbon tax would likely have an impact on the demand of fossil fuels, the result being about a 5% reduction in transportation-related emissions. As Dave noted, 39% of Manitoba's emissions come from the transportation sector. It's the sector that's been growing, and it's the sector that the NDP government refuses to deal with. And so that 5% reduction would itself be about 281 kilotons in reductions. So we can really quickly see the type of things that a carbon tax could fund, how it could fundamentally change how we're living and create the investment that we need going forward. Um, 
other things that, of course, it could be used for. Fair free transit of the buses have promoted. Incentives for people to purchase electric vehicles. In the same way as a 5% decrease in demand of transportation, if we converted just 5% of Manitoba's vehicles to electric, that's about 281 kilotons of reduction itself. Um, better building practices. Let's help Manitobans insulate their homes. It's going to help them save money in their own pocket. I think Dave, as a contractor, could probably tell you a lot about some of the technicals of it. But it's going to help people put money back in their pockets. It's going to increase the value of our housing stock. And it's going to help us address climate change. We also know that we need to move towards sustainable agriculture. We know that organic agriculture and local agriculture uses less energy, produces less emissions, so creating a localized food system. These are all things that we know that we need and the Green Party of Manitoba has put out a plan that shows exactly with the numbers attached how this could be implemented and how this could be implemented now, unlike a cap and trade system or a carbon stewardship program which the details aren't there and will take years to implement. So that really concludes our submissions and subject to any questions that you may have, uh, I'd be happy to help answer them.